Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Deerfield Memorial Day Committee, I welcome you to our program entitled Deerfield Remembers. Today, as we observe Memorial Day in Deerfield, we join with millions of Americans across this great nation and the world to honor our war dead. First of all, I'd like to welcome uh, a few guests uh, representing local uh, churches. We have Mr. Jack Cooper from the former First Congregational Church, who'll be offering a prayer at Brookside for us. Father Robert Korber from Holy Name of Jesus will be uh, offering a prayer here, as well as at the Holy Name Cemetery. Father Jonathan Reardon will offer our invocation, and uh, as well, he'll be saying a prayer at the cemetery. We have our select board members. Uh, the chairman is Trevor McDaniel, Carolyn Ness, and Mr. David Wolfram. And I welcome all of you. To begin our program, I would invite Father Jonathan Reardon to offer an invocation. Dear friends, we gather on this Memorial Day to honor those who have laid down their lives for the safety and protection of our nation, for the values that we espouse, freedom, justice, peace, and a better world for our children and our families. In a day that is often filled with cookouts and the gathering of friends and family, may we take some time to be silent, to pray, to intercede for those who have laid down their lives, and for those who protect us still. Let us pray. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, look kindly upon our friends and family members who have offered their lives in defense of our country. They departed this world in service of a greater good. Grant them eternal life in your kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. For the playing of our national anthem, I remind you of the proper protocol. Uniform military with cover will, of course, salute. Non-uniform military with cover have the option of saluting or placing their right hand over their hearts. Civilians should stand, if able, remove their hats and place the right hand over the heart. At this time, uh, we invite the Frontier Regional Band under the direction of Mr. Max Sherrill to play the national anthem. Please stand. Please remain standing for just a moment. I'd like to thank the Frontier Regional Band under the direction of Max Sherrill. They dedicated their weekend to the memorial services here in the town of Deerfield as well as Waitley and Sunderland. Uh, I'd like to give them a nice round of applause. Thank you. Please remain standing so that we may present the colors and the veterans will be seated. And the other veterans are welcome to come and be seated during the program. We have seats up front available for you if you'd like. Good morning. Wow. It's a beautiful day. It's a sunny day. It's the perfect day for us to remember. How appropriate, if you will, a reflecting pond that asks us to look back to remember those who served this country and who gave an ultimate sacrifice. In 2003, in August, 
Sergeant, U.S. Army Sergeant Gregory A. Belanger was serving in Iraq. He was a former student. He grew up in Old Deerfield. He attended Deerfield Elementary School. He was a lot of fun to be with. He was classic all boy. My last memory of him was when he was helping local kids bail hay. But in August, our gold star mother, Kathy Belanger, received the unfortunate news that her son was killed in action. Each year we ask Kathy to provide some inspiring words for us to think, for us to reflect, and us to ponder the great gifts we receive from those who have served, those who made the ultimate sacrifice, and those who continue to serve. Escorting uh, Kathy, or having escorted Kathy before were two Frontier Regional School uh, students, Sumner Sobieski and Renee Haight. So Kathy, you're on. Thank you, and everyone please be seated. Good morning, everybody. First off, I want to thank you for coming. Um, you know, it doesn't get easier any year. So I do have cheat notes this year, um, but we're going to go from here. I want to ask you, what does Memorial Day really mean to you? For some, it's an extra day off. It's the beginning of summer, opening up a camp firing up the barbecue, or catching the best sale. I think Memorial Day over the years has become clouded. Everyone must be reminded of the true meaning. This is not happy Memorial Day, but it's a saying that people have gotten caught up in because it's a very awkward day for some people. It is a somber day of remembrance. It's a day to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice, the men and the women from all of the wars. The ultimate sacrifice of towns, men and women, this country was founded on the blood of these patriots who defended all that we hold so very dear. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This August marks 16 years. And even though this is Memorial Day, the day that we honor our war dead, I am reminded of Greg's death every day. It could be something as simple as hearing Crazy Train, which was his wrestling warm-up song, or seeing some young fellow go buzzing into the frontier parking lot in his Toyota, or Oida, as Greg would call it. And then I'm always reminded when the trees start blooming and the, tr and the flowers come out because of the pollen, he suffered terribly. But it really hit home just a few weeks ago when we gathered that night to welcome home Megan. It brought back everything tenfold. But as I looked around, I saw a sea of American flags and I saw a community come together. And that's what it's all about, us coming together and celebrating these people. I felt the shock, again, my heart being pulled out of my chest. I was very honored to have some of my friends comfort me. I stood in silence as the tears came down my face. I know how the burns feel, the shock, the disbelief, and a very senseless tragedy. But do you know also that these feelings 
are shared by many of the veterans that are sitting here today. I bet you didn't think about that. We have some men that have done World War II, the Vietnam conflict, Korea. They were in the trenches. They had buddies that didn't make it home. We cannot even conceive what they saw or they lived through. As they say, war is hell. I found a quote that I really like. Grief never ends, but it changes. It's a passage, not a place to stay. Grief is not a sign of weakness, nor a lack of faith. It is the price of love. I also found a letter on the internet. This is a second cousin of our family, Brendan Bergeron. And it read like this. Happy Memorial Day. I know most mean well by saying that. And others, it's just a polite gesture in passing for the weekend. But for a lot of us, this day, weekend, is real, raw and emotional. It doesn't get, it, it doesn't hurt any more than any other day when dealing with loss. But the constant commercial sales and the lack of respect for the day's real meaning brings a little more pain and emotion than usual for those dealing with veteran loss. I'm not trying to rant and I'm not telling you not to celebrate. In fact, the opposite. Celebrate the freedoms we have. I will, he stated. Just take a sec and remember those that made it possible. And this is from a veteran. And the other thing that he ended his little paragraph was he was there the day one of his battle buddies died and he goes I was so close but I couldn't help forgive me there's nothing to forgive he was doing his job he's carried this sadness now almost 10 years later and the veterans that are here today, they have their suitcase, and in their suitcase, there are their memories. So what we need to do is honor them and our war dead. I also want to say the day of Megan's coming home, I was very pleased to see all of you and the array of flags. To me, the flag represents our freedom. And that's something that everybody should hang and share, not only on Memorial Day, but all of the holidays. It is with great honor that I want to give the Memorial Day Committee $2,000 to continue the tradition of hanging the flags. And I, I charge you all to hang your flags. I want each and every Deerfield house to show their pride. So today, when you go to the cemetery, please bring that extra pot and put it on the grave of a veteran. Lower your head, say a prayer, and remember to say thank you. God bless. on behalf of the town I thank you very much for the very generous donation and thank you very much for your words most of all we thank you for your family sacrifice at this time we'd like to ask you to join our parade marshal Colonel John Pachorek to present the memorial wreath may we have a drum roll please
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 75 years ago, our next guest served as a young man in the South Pacific during World War II. Please welcome United States Navy Petty Officer Second Class Fabe Gardwell. I am the flag. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand guard with power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for truth, honor, peace, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. I am worshipped, I am saluted, I am respected, and yes, I am feared. I have fought in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. I was flown at Valley Forge, Gettysburg, Shiloh, and, and Shiloh and Appomattox. I was there at San Juan Hill, in the trenches of France, the Aragon Ferris, Angio, Rome and the beaches of Normandy, Guam, Okinawa, Korea, and Kisha, Saigon, Vietnam. I was there, I led my troops. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired, but my soldiers cheered me, and I was tired. I led my troops. I was, I was proud. I have been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I have held set free, but it does not hurt, for I am invisible. I have been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country, and when it is by those with whom I have fought in battle, it hurts, but I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and should watch over the un uncharted frontiers of faith from my point on the moon. I have borne silent witness to all of America's finest hours, but my finest hours are yet to come. When I'm torn in strips and used for bandages fallen men on the battlefield, when I salute my soldier at half-mast, when I lie in the trembling arms of a giving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter, that is when I am most proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember this. The red of our country's flag was made red by their heroism. The white most stainlessly pure by the motives which impelled it. And in the starry fields of our nation's glorious banner, the blue has been glorified by the service they had rendered for America's ideals. How do you follow faith? The power is his remembrance for years he has blessed us and across Sunderland and Waitley. And he represents for me that generation, and I say this to the great men and, men and women at uh, post 3295, I'm honored to be with you. So on one spectrum we have somebody who has always entertained us. I have no idea why and how he remembers it. Well, the truth is I do, because it's personal. It's my honor to introduce something that's personal to me, to help the next generation of people in this community remember what respect and honor look and sound like. I introduce the Deerfield Elementary School Chorus under the direction of Anthony Tracia. The Chorus.
Thank you very much. We had a number of events throughout the last two weeks leading up to Memorial Day, one of which was a full school assembly at Deerfield Elementary. We had one in Waitley as well, and uh, wonderful to have the youth involved in these programs. During 2012, our committee established the Veterans Street Sign Project to honor the town of Deerfield's 24 known KIAs, or Killed in Action. The program was directed by the late Betty Hollingsworth, who prepared military biographies and organized the individual ceremonies to dedicate the signs. Signs are decorated each year during the week before Memorial Day. Another event uh, involved the Frontier Regional Baseball Team. The members uh, range in age from 15 to 18. And as they assisted in decorating the street signs that you see around you here, I told them the story about a few of our veterans, including Jimmy Campbell, young lad that grew up right around the corner, Rayburn Road, and uh, Jimmy later joined the 82nd um, Airborne Division, U.S. Army. And while he was landing behind German-occupied enemy lines in France, he was killed instantly by a V-1 bomb. Benny March Kytus is sign is across the street, Elm Street. Benny lived nearby. Benny died in the famous Battle of the Bulge, and his family has a monument that lies in St. Stan's Cemetery. Benny never made it home. He's buried in Belgium. Down South Main Street, at the corner of Thayer Street, we have a sign for Stanley Totsik. He was parachuted shooting in again behind enemy lines on D-Day, June 6, 1944 in France, Normandy. And he was injured and he died within a few days. We have so, uh, two street signs honoring Vietnam veterans, Ron Giroux, Richard Scott. They served alongside veterans, not unlike these veterans that are here today with us from the VFW that are Vietnam veterans. Charles Yastramski, and uh, he was attempting to rescue a fallen patrol leader who was injured by shrapnel. Another German artillery bomb landed in the area and injured both of them, forcing him over a bridge and into the water and a river. He was able to hold his patrol leader above water long enough to be rescued, but unfortunately the water carried him down downstream and he drowned. For his meritorious actions he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross which is second most only to the Medal of Honor. And lastly there's one more example I'll give you on Eastern Avenue. Seaman Second Class, U.S. Navy, John Brunkard served and, and died in World War II. His brother served and his sister Alice Brunkard Savage is still here in town with us, and we thank her for her family's service. At this time, I'd like to ask Memorial Day Committee member David White and um, Radar Men Second Class U.S. Navy Roger Gaucher to read the names of the 24 known killed in action from the town of Deerfield. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Ashley, United States Marine Corps. Sergeant Gregory Belanger, United States Army. Seaman Second Class John W. Brunkert, U.S. Navy. Private First Class Walter J. Brzozowski, United States Marine Corps. Private James S. Campbell, U.S. Army. Private First Class James A. Childs, United States Army. Private Charles M. Clapp, United States Army. Private Raymond T. Clapp, United States Army. Sergeant Stephen G. Everett, United States Army Air Corps. Private Stanford I. Gabo, 
the United States Army. Private First Class Ronald Giroux, United States Army. Sergeant Archie C. Hale, United States Army. First Lieutenant Alan J. Johnson, U.S. Army Air Corps. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Johnson, U.S. Army Air Corps. Sergeant Benjamin B. Marchakaitis, U.S. Army. Seaman Second Class William Carl Muller, U.S. Navy. First Sergeant Frank P. Namayeski, U.S. Army. PFC William S. Petich, U.S. Army. Sergeant Richard A. Scott, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Joseph A. Sokolowski, U.S. Army. PFC Stanley W. Kazik, U.S. Army. Captain John Kenneth Warger, U.S. Air Force. Staff Sergeant Woodrow W. White, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Charles J. Yastramski, U.S. Army. Thank you, gentlemen. During the Civil War, Graves of both the Union and Confederate armies, uh, veterans who had died, were decorated. Um, we're going to hear the Gettysburg Address re uh, recited now by Oliver Brown of the Deerfield Elementary School. Oliver? Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on the great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus so far nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measures of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these deaths shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you, Oliver. Well done. I told him I was going to leave a copy here. I neglected to do so, but uh, he, he told me that he had it recited, and I said, so I believe him. <laughs> Wonderful job. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to invite Mary Lipinski Wolfram to sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. My 
thine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on In the beauty of the lilies Christ was born across the sea With a glory in his bosom That transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory. Hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. Thank you very much. A beautiful song on a beautiful day. In Deerfield, we have a long-standing tradition of remembering those who served in the military and passed away during the past three years. Today, we will invite U.S. Navy Captain Julie Chalfont and U.S. Army Specialist Linda Olszewski to present the roll call of the fallen. Jimmy Lee Terrell, David C. Watkelowitz, Robert E. Lambert, George Mather Vogel, Rudolph Charles Swist, Jesse M. Britt, Louis A. Velasquez, Robert Rice Lawrence. Robert William Bialecki. John Melnick. Richard A. Rowe. Kevin V. Moore. Leslie L. Thomas. Cheryl L. Hughes. John James Krolick, Irving J. Maluski, Laura A. Jakutowitz Britz, M. Douglas Sackman, Frank M. Nida, Michael J. Magalinski, Jr. Edward H. Hobby, Edward Turner, Charles J. Bahanowitz, Oliver Stewart Chase, Raymond J. Equi, Charles 
P. Barker, Victor S. Warius, Herbert V. Marsh, Jr., Alexander J. Terrapain, Martin N. Kellogg, Roger A. Perry, Leonard J. Skalski, Helene M. Finkowski, Henry Druniani, Stanley F. Kowecki, Jr., Stanley Kopeck, Jr., Raymond John Scott, John M. Walsh, John J. Jankowski, Jr., James R. Gribko, Robert Gerard Dautil, Walter P. Maisner, Herbert E. Brown, Jr., Edwin G. Reed, Donald J. Thorpe, Regina Skalski Boron, Megan Burns. I was informed recently that by Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order, U.S. flags will be lowered to half staff today to honor not only all our fallen, but in a special way for U.S. Navy Corpsman Megan Burns, whose remains were returned to South Deerfield via military escort on May 14, 2019. At this time, I'd like to request a moment of silence for all of our deceased veterans. Thank you very much. Colonel, prepare to honor the dead. Now invite Miss Lisa Woods for God Bless America. I'd just like to say that it is truly an honor to have the opportunity to sing for the Memorial Day service, especially God Bless America, every year. And I ask that on the second time through, please join me. Please sing loud, 
sing proud. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, why we foam? God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Everybody, please join me. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairie. We now ask Reverend Robert Corber to lead us in prayer with a final blessing. This is truly the day that the Lord hath made. Greater love hath no man than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his friends. How appropriate as we gather on this Memorial Day. Let us pray. Almighty and Eternal Father, as we gather here today on this Memorial Day, we would seek your blessings to rest upon all of us. We pray this day for all our departed veterans who have paid the ultimate sacrifice that we might live in a land where freedom rings. They were the ones who gave the last measure of their devotion to you and to our great nation grant unto their souls eternal rest and perpetual light. On this Memorial Day, we pray for all the families of the faithful departed, the parents, the spouses, and especially their children. Grant unto all of them your abiding love and peace. Loving Father, on this day, we pray for all our wounded veterans to have the strength and the courage to face daily their difficulties and hardships, both body and mind. May they know that you are ever present in their lives. God, keep in your tender care all those men and women who are presently serving our nation 
both here and abroad, and especially those who are in harm's way. Protect them with your divine spirit. Watch over them, that they may know the unbounded love that you have for them. For you are our Creator, who out of love made each of us in your divine image. Lord God, to you be given glory, praise, and honor. Bless our great nation, our leaders, and encompass all of us with your eternal presence. May your peace reign over us, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Will everyone please rise for the retirement of the colors? This concludes today's ceremony. The parade will continue to our town cemeteries and end at the Selka County Senior Center where refreshments will be offered to all on behalf of our committee. I thank you for your attendance and wish you and your families a safe and enjoyable Memorial Day. God bless America and God bless our troops. Thank you.